Larry Pardee died on July 27th, 2020. And here's why his life meant so much to me as a sailor and as a cruiser. Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today's episode is a tribute to Larry Pardee, remembering a man who made a huge difference in my own personal sailing life. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Quahog Bay Bedding, offering custom bedding for your boat-shaped mattress. Perfect, snug fit every time with our cinch fit system. Whether your mattress is on the boat or on land, Quahog Bay Bedding has the perfect solution for easy and beautiful bed making, including coordinated blankets and toppers. Tired of sheets that don't stay put? We've got you covered. Sleeping on board has never been more comfy or as easy. Visit QuahogBayBedding.com to learn more. That's Q-U-A-H-O-G-B-A-Y-B-E-D-D-I-N-G.com. Larry Pardee and his wife, Lynn, sailed for years on two hand-built wooden sailboats, one 24 feet and one 29 feet. They wrote incredibly about the cruising that they did on a small, home-built, engineless sailboat. They circumnavigated on Seraphin, which was a 24-footer. And the books that they wrote about their cruising were completely instrumental in helping us decide on the kind of boat that we wanted to buy. We started our adventure in looking for a boat way back in 1991, and that was back before the time of the internet, when you went to the library or went on Dolphin Books or Blue Water Books and bought books that you could to read about this cruising lifestyle. And Jeremy, who was a very, very experienced sailor, made a list of seven different boats that he was going to check out, that we were going to check out. These ranged from heavy displacement monohulls to racing trimarans, from small yard semi-custom vessels to offerings from large production y- yards like Geno and Beneteau. And the boat that we wound up with is, yes, the same Bristol Channel Cutter that we have today still that we're in the middle of doing a refit for. But I think one of the things that is kind of hard to imagine now when we think about boats and how they're built, that it, it's not a stretch in the slightest to say that without the parties, without Larry and Lynn, there would actually be no Bristol Channel Cutter. It's not that they themselves built this boat, but the tales of cruising and based on the years of cruising that they did, particularly of successful cruising on their 24-foot wooden boat, Seraphin, led exactly and directly to Lyle Hess, who was the man who designed Seraphin, being asked to design the 28-foot fiberglass Bristol Channel Cutter that was built by the Sam Morse Company. And that's, yes, the boat that we have. So absolutely, Larry Party and Lynn together were directly responsible for us having the boat that we do just from a very personal, physical, practical standpoint. The other way that the parties were completely instrumental in us being cruisers and having the boat that we do was just the fact that they captured our imaginations with the idea and tales and yarns and, and endless discussion of cruising on that small wooden boat that they built themselves. They made cruising feel attainable. Their philosophy is one that even if you don't necessarily know that it came from Lynn and Larry Party, might be one that you've heard before. And their philosophy was go small, go simple, and go now. And for us, just out of college, back in the early 90s, that completely resonated with us. Frankly, that philosophy still completely resonates with us. And it's why we're talking about going cruising, extensive cruising, on our same 28-foot sailboat. And of course, it's not just the philosophy, but the fact that their boat, mostly when I'm talking about their boat, I'm talking about Seraphin because they wrote four different cruising books about cruising on Seraphin, in addition to a number of other more practical hands-on, in addition to more practical hands-on uh, how-to cruising books that are based on their experience on Seraphin. But the similarities between their boats and ours run the gamut from how the boats sail to how they heave to to the layout of storage under the settees. 
they help us think about how to deal with things like anchor stowage. And one of the things that is on Jeremy's project list, and we have a few of the parts together, of building a wind vane self-steering unit that is exactly to Larry's design. We were lucky enough to meet Larry once at the Annapolis Boat Show back in what I think was 1998, although looking on Google, it sounds like it might have been 99. I can't imagine that we were at the Annapolis Boat Show in 99 because we had a brand new little one back then. So that's my memory of the whole thing. But he and Lynn had Talison, their second boat, in the show as a fundraiser. And he signed a copy of their newly released cost, cost Conscious Cruiser. And he answered some of our questions. I've been lucky enough to get to know Lynn a little bit more personally helping out at her booth at the Annapolis Boat Show the last few years. Larry died at the age of 81. He battled Parkinson's and dementia and resulting compounding health issues that come from those kinds of diseases. And though he hasn't been sailing for a few years, his legacy remains and absolutely continues to inspire many people. Go small, go simple, go now. Isn't maybe that something we should hold on to and grab, particularly in these very, very uncertain times? One of the things that Larry loved was sailing by the stars. And that meant knowing the stars intimately. And in their home base that they built on New Zealand, he started an observatory to help youngsters who never really had spent much time understanding the stars and their importance in our lives and in practical life too. He built an observatory and funded it with enough money to have a couple of different telescopes that were going. And there is a fundraiser that was established to support this if you are so inclined to give. Certainly when I look at our sailing life and our cruising life, I can't think of anybody who's really been much more instrumental to us, whether he knew it or not. But Larry Party, because without Larry and his excitement and interest in going cruising, Lynn wouldn't have gone cruising. If they hadn't gone cruising, and yes, Lynn was mostly the writer, but and Larry added a few things to it. But the combination of the two of them but Larry, as the backbone of it, is absolutely an inspiration and in why we are cruising on the boat that we are and in the way that we're choosing to do so. If you're not familiar with Larry and Lynn and their writing, I encourage you to do it. The tales that they spin of a life more simple in a time that was much less complicated and certainly there were fewer cruisers out there, but they will help you understand small bits of what is so magical about this cruising life that we're working so hard to get started on again. Thank you, Larry, for the work that you did, for the life that you lived. Thank you, Lynn and Larry, together for the writing that you did on there. Go small, go simple, go now. I can't wait to see you out there. Thanks so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. If you like what you've heard, Please share it with a friend and don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.